Hey, today we are going to change out the furnace filter. I have a forced air induction gas furnace filter. I usually like to change it every other month. So here's what we have for uh, what I usually change it with. Uh, feather duster, trash bag, gloves, glasses, uh, some sort of headlamp, uh, feather duster, and ear protection optional because we're going to be using our uh, shop vac here to clean out and then uh, of course your furnace filter and you want to get the right size I uh, personally like the disposable ones um, when I had the furnace uh, checked out uh, several years ago they said that the uh, disposable ones less uh, air resistance so the uh, furnace didn't have to work as hard so um, there are others there are reusable ones um, these I got from Home Depot, or um, so that uh, that's my preference. And in addition to that, I uh, picked this uh, this box up. This is actually for gift wrapping, and um, it works great for uh, storing these. And I usually buy these uh, practically by the case. These furnace filters, and then I have a uh, a little that actually fit my particular model you have to you know for your model will be different so now first things first so here we are at our thermostat um, yours may probably be different because mine's is uh, over 20 years old so uh, what we what I want to do is turn off the power turn off the heat and then uh, fan we're going to put auto but heat off and then what I actually like to do is uh, wipe it down with a uh, dust rag just wipe it all, wipe the surface down wipe the outside and then um, then I like to take my air can duster and uh, air can duster here and I like to spray behind it Now yours may be different if you have the newer model. Obviously, uh, turn off the power, um, clean it up as as the normal instructions for your thermostat. Some thermostats have a battery backup, so it's a good idea to check that battery and maybe label it to see um, and put a little label on there to see when the last time you changed it because probably on those batteries it's a good idea maybe every year. So yeah, I just I always clean my. Uh, thermostat XC1180 um, this is a forced air induction gas natural gas and it's also part of the AC AC unit and condenser the top there so uh, this is a closed system which means it a uh, closed loop system so it takes fresh air from upstairs and some models um, to pull your fresh air from outside so uh, I wrote, uh, had last time they uh, checked my uh, furnace, they wrote the filter size and then direction of airflow. And so in my particular unit, the air filter is right inside here. So um, I always uh, do a visual inspection, outside visual inspection first to see, uh, and then I dust and clean around the unit. You do a visual inspection and then check my uh, gas lines and then uh, do a sniff test to make sure there's no uh, sign of uh, natural gas. And then just to check the condition of the gas line. It's always good to uh, do, just do some check it out periodically maintenance. And then we're wearing uh, gloves to pull off these panels. Again, depending on your model. Um, the older models you had to pull off these panels depending on the diff your particular model to change your your filter but mine's is I have to pull the panels up and the edges of these panels are uh, like uh, razor blades 
So that's hence the gloves. So we're going to pull off these panels and my, my particular unit on this one, uh, these pull up. So this first one pulls up and then this one, pull, the bottom one pulls up. So, so here's uh, my furnace and I just want to mention these uh, sharp edges. Um, they will slice your finger in you know, without protective gloves on. So uh, depending on your model, um, definitely wear gloves uh, if you have to take off these metal panels because those edges are extremely sharp. So we're going to put the uh, panels aside here. And what I do like to do is just do a visual inspection first. Um, this is the uh, just to check to see um, if there's anything that's uh, leaking or broken just to do a visual inspection and um, these of course are the burners and what we're going to do is um, I'm going to take a, a feather duster and dust all this out and then I'm going to take my air can and then hit these burners and I'll show you in a minute where I uh, usually like to check out. And so here's here's my furnace filter. And um, yours is probably going to be different. But before we pull that out, I want to uh, clean clean everything. I uh, a duster, and I just uh, dust to make sure I don't disrupt these wires. And because um, if you don't, well, what I found is the uh, dust and what accumulates in here and then it starts burning and smelling. So I try to uh, keep this as clean as possible. We're going to vacuum it out. We're going to do some dusting on it. So um, I try to keep it as clean as possible because uh, so it's easier to service. You're not fighting cobwebs and then that doesn't cook and you have a burning smell and it's just to keep everything clean. So I'm just going to take my uh, duster and just dust around and then I'll take hit it with the vacuum and the air duster can as well. So again, it, uh, so, so then we uh, take our trash bag and obviously it fits my filter. And so my particular filter is spring loaded and this actually pulls back. I gentle on it and then I just, uh, sometimes it gets stuck in the back there. I put the date of when this was last changed. I put it on here and then I also have a little record keeping and we're just going to pull it out a little and um, this one is actually not too bad but again because the summer obviously I'm not using the furnace that much but this looks pretty good but I'm going to go ahead and replace it anyways so we're going to throw that away and then I'm uh, going to vacuum out that inside there and I want to vacuum all this out and then we're going to hit it with the feather duster so um, Again, I try to keep it as clean as possible. Um, just the nature of it is it's dusty. But uh, yeah, my particular unit way in the back here, it connects, and uh, it connects way in the back on mine. It's uh, got this spring. But your model, hopefully, uh, be a little easier for you to. I uh, shop vac end, and I uh, go around and clean all the edges. And as far as my shop back nozzle goes, and I uh, touch this with the vacuum, and then I'm most concerned about really cleaning each of these orifices out. First with the vacuum, and then I'm going to hit it with the, the uh, air duster. Because when the furnace guy came out, he says, because this furnace shares the room, the la uh, shares the laundry room of, with the dryer. The uh, dust will get built built up on those uh, ends and clog it up, and then it won't burn correctly. That's one really area of concern. Then the other area is the flames is the flame sensor, and that's the most important. So right there is the flame sensor, and I usually like to hit that with a can of air duster and then some contact cleaner, electronic contact cleaner and wait for that to dry because what your flame sensor does is it senses your flame if that is clogged up or not working correctly it will shut off the gas but leave your blower going 
and it'll uh, my particular unit it'll go to lockout so what that means is there's uh, on my, my particular this particular furnace it's got a window that you can look through and then there's a little LED that blinks you see it there so basically when the unit goes to lockout it's not going to deliver any gas because it senses a problem with the uh, ignition system and, and uh, most of the time it's that flame sensor so I always clean that very really well each time I change my filter just so I don't have any issues. I've, in addition, I've also replaced this flame sensor, and uh, it's th my this particular furnace. It's a quarter inch uh, nut, but I bought a couple of these flame sensors, so I have on hand, so it's not in the middle of the winter and my furnace is going out. In addition, that's the ignition, and I've never really had any issues with it. I still clean that with a little air duster. But I don't clean it with contact cleaner because the residue on the contact cleaner is uh, going to burn. Then you're going to have a little fire on your hands. So I clean that with a can of air duster. And then I clean my uh, flame sensor as well. So I'm going to finish vacuuming all, all of this outside here. And, uh, and then I will hit it with the uh, air duster. Can of air duster. Okay. So I vacuumed everything out, and then I'm going to hit each, each of these areas with the can of air duster. I'm going to try to curl the hose to try to get within that uh, feeding orifice of each one of these. I hit each one of these, and then I, I uh, clean this off, blow that off, and then we're going to hit that flame sensor like I mentioned before. Because when that goes out, then you have it doesn't have any gas and then your furnace is not going to work. So um, we're going to hit that and then we're going to clean everything out with the air duster and then I'm just going to spot hit that with a little bit of contact cleaner. So we're going to air duster all this and uh, just clean everything out. Well obviously we vacuumed it out a little bit but I always like to go over with the electronic air duster because uh, it's specifically for electronics so you could you could obviously start with this but you're gonna chew up a can of air dusters so whatever your preference is but I just try to keep everything nice and clean so I've cleaned my flame sensor with the air duster and I'm just gonna hit it with a little bit of this the contact cleaner I'm gonna wait for this to dry quite a while so um, we're gonna do that now and uh, obviously I'm using a light for this video but to get a light um, use a little spotlight so you can check uh, do a good examination of your fit furnace so we're going to hit the uh, flame sensor just a little bit with contact cleaner and make sure it's nice and clean and we're going to do a visual inspection on that the flame sensor then I also hit it with a can of little air duster So there's our flame sensor, and you can actually take yours out if you really want to clean it and examine it. I've uh, done, I've checked mine out about six months ago, and depending on uh, your particular furnace, um, mine, mine is just a quarter inch nut there and it unplugs. But uh, and I bought a couple extra of these spare because I don't want my furnace uh, in the middle of a blizzard it, it quitting, it dying on me. So. That, uh, your flame sensor gets accumulated with uh, dust and dirt, primarily dust, and then a, a flame bakes it on, and then it can't get a good reading, and then it's going to lock out your furnace. So that's like number one. And I, I bought a couple packs of those, so I have on hand. And then my igniter, I've never really had problems with the ignition. But I, I still clean it with a little air duster, just air duster only. And then I again do a visual inspection. And uh, once we've let this your flame sensor dry in about five, ten minutes, and then we're ready to uh, put our uh, filter in. And uh, if you don't have a nice a bright spotlight, then use a little headlamp. And uh, you want to make sure you know the direction of airflow. 
So my airflow, this is the uh, clean side or the intake side, and then it's going to the blower is going to uh, in, intake it and then um, distribute it through the vents. Inserted, I've installed my um, furnace filter and I went ahead and put on the label today's date of when I changed it and then I made sure at the very top there that it's covering the intake because sometimes when they uh, install these they don't uh, do a perfect exact job when they cut out the intake and as you can see mine's is bent a little bit it was just when they um, uh, installed this and so I just want to make sure it's level and then covering on the top and then on the bottom is bottom is harder to tell but uh, um, but yeah just make sure it completely covers the opening your filter covers the opening and then make sure your airflow arrow is pointing in the direct correct direction and obviously you have the right size so uh, everything looks good here um, I have my little light here and I'm just going along and looking to see if I see anything out of the ordinary any uh, points that is possibly leaking or rusting you know it's good to just do a visual inspection of your uh, furnace okay we're back at our thermostat and we're going to turn it back to heat we're going to turn it on fan is on so it's heating and then we're going to check uh, the furnace downstairs. So I also have a little uh, sheet that I have in plastic of everything we did today. I put today's date, new filter, vacuumed out and I just typed these up and I put this near the furnace so I know when the last time I've changed this. Last time was a late March. Well we didn't use the furnace and air condition much during the summer so my filter looked pretty decent normally through the winter months I like to change this every other month the filter do a visual inspection change clean that uh, uh, flame sensor clean everything out make sure the furnace is in good working order because you don't want to go into winter and have your furnace die 